In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was what? Whew. So we said that in the beginning, okay? See, that's why you need that. Okay? And the reason we said it is because we're talking about two beginnings. The first beginning is what? The one that we know about is creation, which is where? Genesis. Genesis. Genesis 1, 1, right? In the beginning, it was creation, right? But then John is talking about some sort of beginning in which we don't know what that actually means, right? It's in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, we had an issue, or we have an issue that a lot of us hadn't, haven't really been taught this way, right? Because I asked the question, I said... What does God look like? Is this the Father and is this the Son? And this is mostly how we have, how we have been taught, right? There is a separation of the Father and then the Son, and it looks this way. But if we look at the verses that we've been looking at, it's actually not the way that it is. Our actual doctrine doesn't teach it this way, um, it, when we think of God, and that's why we say God the Father and God the Son. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was God, and in the beginning was Jesus, and this is God. So when we think of God, we shouldn't be thinking of God as God and Jesus. It's God and Jesus. And if you want, just to make me make, make more sense of it, you can even say, God and Jesus, still one, two in one, not two gods, one God, two natures. Yes? I know it's not an easy thing to grasp, especially growing up the way that we've been taught. God the Father... God the Son, God. As in, God looks like, let me do it this way. God looks like this. The Father and the Son. One nature, one God. Two persons. That's what it says. That's what it is. Look, um, Romans, let's, let's start there. Romans 9 5. And we'll, this is the last time I'm going to touch on this particular part of it. Romans 9 5. What does it say? Just in, Romans 9 5 says, To them belong the, uh, what's this word? Patriarch. Patriarchs, and for their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ. Who is God overall? Blessed forever. Amen. Mine says, Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is what? God overall forever be praised. Amen. Amen. So, what is he saying? Jesus or the Messiah is God overall. Here, and, and check this out, right? Uh, Roman, uh, John 20, John 20, 27. <clears throat> Now, everyone knows who Thomas is, right? Also known as what, Rob? Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas, right? So this is the part where Thomas, um, Jesus walks in and, and he says, he says to Thomas, because Thomas has said, unless I touch with my hands, like the very holes in his, in his flesh, like I will not believe. And look at what Jesus says. Elmer. 2027? Yes. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. And put your... Put out your hand and place it on my side. All the way to 29. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Okay, what does he call him? My Lord and my, Lord God. And my God. Okay, look at what 29 says. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Did Jesus correct him? No. Did Jesus say, I'm not God? He said, no, don't call me God. He, Jesus didn't say that at all. Thomas says, my Lord, my God. And Jesus said, you have believed because you have seen. Blessed are those who do not see. 
and still believe. So in no way does Jesus correct the idea that Thomas says, you are my Lord and you are my God because Jesus is God. Because it's two in one. It's God the Father and God the Son. And they compose this thing called God. Now, here's the thing. I, I can't explain how this works. I, I can't. Like, I don't know how this works. Like, that, that's not revealed to us. It, it, there's no way that shows, well, how does, who says what and who does what. Now, we know one thing, that the Son submits to the Father. That we know. Um, with Philippians in 2.16, 2.16, says, um, For he did not, being in the very nature of God, did not see to his own advantage to stay in this form, but then subject himself and became a slave. So we know that in some way, somehow, the Son, in his nature, Jesus, or I should say Christ, submits himself to the Father somehow, but he is still in the very same nature as God. In Spanish, it's very clear. Porque de tal manera, in, 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 in John 3.16, Porque de tal manera amó Dios al mundo que mandó a su hijo unigénito. Unigénito means único en su genio. The only one of, of his kind. Meaning there is no other that exists in that form. He is the only one. Unigénito. Único de su genio. The only type of that that exists. There is no other. It, it's very clear. It's, it's not this. And, and I know that's a hard pill to swallow, okay? I, I know it is. It, it's this. And John 111 could not be more clear. And neither could Jesus when he prays for you and I are one. Isaiah 7, 16, Isaiah 9, 6, Emmanuel, God with us, 9, 16, where it says he will be called mighty God when he's talking directly about the Messiah. The Messiah. Okay. Point or doctrinal point that exists that our church teaches, that the doctrine teaches, but uh, even our, our, our elder believers still haven't completely swallowed this pill it's because they have never been taught this way but this is it okay this is any questions yes um, in a lot of I don't know if you guys notice in a lot of hill song music and a lot of the contemporary songs they refer to Jesus being God mm -hmm. and, and it's very I don't know if we all catch it but uh, we sing it all the time. Yeah, we yeah. actually yeah, yeah, we sing it all the time. Yeah. And I remember going through a period where I, I started looking at the lyrics and I was struggling. I thought, what the heck? You know, I don't, what am I saying here? You know? uh, so it took a while for me to get it. But also, um, the, the last uh, conference we had with all the churches, um, I realized on one of the songs they actually changed the lyrics because uh, they took out Jesus being God and they changed it for something else. So it's... You know, we're, we're, we've certainly grown up that way, yeah. and uh, I've struggled with it myself. Uh, but what is true, I think that's what is undeniably true, rather than what have we been taught. Yeah. And we're just testing it. But, uh, yeah, we sing it. Yeah. I don't know if you know it. Certainly sing it. You know, a lot of times the response I get from things that I want to do or change, the response I get a lot of times is, but we've been doing it like this for so long. So what the response is, but our tradition says this. Listen, the tradition contradicts biblical truth. Something has to go. Right? Something has to go. If my tradition says this, if the Bible says this, I got to get rid of one of them. Which one do you think I should get rid of? It ain't the Bible. I gotta get rid of tradition. And that's the truth. Right now, I get it. Like, look, I, 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 look, even at some level, okay, at some level, but not completely, my dad still kind of sees it this way. My dad, okay? Not completely, 
like he completely this right but at some level he's still right because not because he actually sprees it that way but because of the tradition that he has inside of him my dad's been church of god his whole life right and it's just it's the way he grew up it was the way he was raised and even when i talk to him sometimes this comes out but i know he knows this and he believes this right like but it's a, it's a tradition thing. And sometimes we sing the songs and we don't really know what it is we're singing. And actually, in our church, our, our denomination, uh, the denomination we come from, has taken the liberty in a lot of songs to change the words because they adapted them to the beliefs of how we believe. But now reading some of the doctrinal statements, reading some of the Sabbath schools, the doctrine is evolving. And this point in particular is taught this way in the doctrinal point of the church. It's presented this way. Okay? It is. Questions? Comments? No? Anybody really hate this right now? <coughs> no? Kimmy? Still struggling with it? Yeah? Okay, yeah. so, um... I don't know how to say it. Okay, so you're telling us that our doctrine has been like that. Our so that's what our doctrine is. Our doctrine is. is like this. And I've always believed it the other way. Right. So, okay, I don't know how to say this. Um, so are you saying... So when we see, like, if we imagine... No, I'm not, oh, yeah, God in heaven. Yes. Are we imagining... Just one, or I'm imagining both of them. <laughs> and that's 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 a, that's a great question, right? And the answer, that's what I'm still right? No, to... and the answer to that question is I don't know. I I don't know what this looks like. Here, I'll, I'll give you something very personal, right? <laughs> and when I pray, I when I pray, like I, when I try to get into it, right? I, I I I like if you close your eyes and you picture God, like I picture. Like this big white throne, and he's sitting on it. But there's no head. It's like a body, and the head is just this light. Right? That's what I picture. Like, obviously, that's not God, but that's my concept of God when I pray. Right? Because I don't know what he looks like. But it's like, I don't know how to picture this because uh first peter says uh first peter says for god is light and another and another one says for god is spirit and we must worship him in spirit and truth so god is light and god is a spirit so i i don't know like and that's the thing as humans what we want to do is you want to how does what does it look like or how can i picture it or how is it composed the truth is i don't know what this looks like I don't. I, I I picture it like like a, a a person who has multiple personalities. Like there's two people living in that one person, and they're both dominant. So here, uh, let me uh, a better example. How do let me see? How do I do this? Let's pretend that Robert uh, Robert's tree service, right? Okay. Let's pretend that Robert is 50% owner and Jesse is 50% owner. Okay? Let's just pretend for now. So Jesse's 50% owner and Robert's 50% owner of San Jose Tree Service. Okay. So when I say San Jose Tree Service, what comes to mind? Robert and Jesse. Why? Because they're the owners. Because it belongs to them. So when I think God, I think Father and Son. Because well, given, okay, so given with that example, couldn't we feel like that also? That they're too different? Not that they're too different, but like, I mean... No, they're too different. Okay, yeah. But we just see them as one like they are. But they're one. Yes. Yes. But they're still like Father and Son. They're two entities wrapped around in one. Mm -hmm. Okay? It, it's And then it's, it's not... Two separate entities, and it's not two gods. It's one god mixed, like 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 this. 
Okay, it's not father and son. It's not father and son. And we worship these two. Okay? It's father and son, and we worship God. Like intertwined. This is the part I can't explain. This part. I can explain this and this. Okay? I can explain father, I can kind of explain father and kind of explain son. But how this works, I have no idea. Like how this how this gets together and, and composes itself and is mixed and holds, I have no clue. That there's no evidence of how I can see that. There's just very small glimpses of what the Bible tells me. But the the, the concept, it's always been the fear. It, I should say the fear. Okay, is that when we look at it. This way is that it's not, we're worshiping two gods. And that's also the problem. That if we see it as this, this technically, if we apply it this way to the way the Bible says, then technically we're talking about two gods. Because Jesus, the Bible says, is God. But if we look at it this way, then we're talking about one God. Which makes more sense in the biblical form that it's expressed. Um, I know none of us have actually like seen Jesus face to face, but when they're asking Jesus, show us the Father, and he says, whoever has seen me has seen the Father, mm -hmm. do we imagine in heaven, like Kimmy said, Jesus on his throne, him being the Father in one? So, something that you missed. Uh -huh. yeah. Welcome back. Yeah. Um, is that when we talk about Jesus Christ, okay, we're talking about a entity that is 100% man and 100% divine. Jesus the man, Christ the divine. Jesus Christ. Jesus is the man part, Christ is the divine part. 100%, 100%. Jesus is just a... It's a physical form of whatever God took on. Yeah, it says in Colossians 2, it says, For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. So it's, that's, that's just the form that he took. But what he looks like in a divine state, oh, I don't know. That's the part that I don't think anyone is able to, to express. So that divine state, is that what we consider the Father and Jesus, the physical form, the, the Christ? Christ. Yeah. Not physical form. Because God does not exist in a physical form. But it says that Jesus, when he ascended to heaven, he's in his bodily form, isn't he? No. No? No. It, he was in the bodily form here. Right. Whether he looks like that in heaven, I think we get into a, a separate subject. Okay, that was yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. Okay. What this looks like is unexplainable. Like I, I don't know how it works, but I do know that it's we do. And you heard it say, "God the Father, God the Son." Why? Because God is composed of Father and Son. This is God right here. When we think God, we should be thinking. Jesus, Christ, and the Father. The issue with this is that we have two deeds. Because we cannot, we cannot, um, we cannot negate the idea that Jesus is divine. It's obvious that he's divine. And if he's divine, then he deserves praise. But God is divine. So then we have two divine people or, or things that deserve worship. So are we worshiping two gods or are we worshiping one? Does that make sense? Because they both deserve worship, right? I mean, that's undisputable. And if they're both divine, then we should be worshiping both. But if we're worshiping both, then in this part that we believe, then we're worshiping two things. But we're not a, what's the word? 
polytheistic. Polyethe polytheistic. We're monotheistic. We believe in one God. Deuteronomy 6 4, here O Israel, your God is one. That's why it makes sense that it is the Father and the Son is God. Yes? Go ahead. So uh, the verse that JC was talking about where uh, Jesus said that he is um, and, the, and the Father are one is in uh, John 10 and it's uh, verse 30 and the situation that's happening is that the Jews are asking him if you're the Christ then just tell us plainly and in the next verse he tells them um, I've already told you and you do not believe and then he says that um, I and my Father are one and that's found in John 10 if you guys want to look at that. Also, well, he says that in John 8, he says the same thing as he prays, takes time away from his apostles. He says the same thing. So he says we are one. Right? When you think San Jose tree service, you think, not, I mean, in our little pretend, right? In San Jose tree, tree service, you think Robert and Jesse. So in the same thing, you think God, you think God the Father and Son. Go ahead. Well, in that same comparison, I mean, even any of the workers, they are San Jose Tree Service. Obviously, we're not going to go further than what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, yeah, in, in a sense, yeah. Yeah, when you think ownership, though. Like, yeah. You, you never, when you think, when you think Facebook, you don't think me. You think Mark Zuckerberg, right? Like, really, like, he, he's the one benefiting all, all the, you know, we're just getting in trouble over it, right? <laughs> That's all we do. We're just getting in trouble using it, but, like, he's making all the money, like, so... Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay? Think about it, okay? Like, read the verses and really study it. It's very important. It's very important. Any questions? Or comments on this? And I know it's it's a hard pill to swallow. I know that. Okay. Last week, I was going to suggest, and I don't know if it was suggested, because I came in a little late. When you drew the circle, I was going to suggest to just redraw the circle around that one circle. And that's... What it, that's what I picture it. Which would technically be the same, in a sense. Because, in, in, like, in the Spanish, when it says unigenito, it's el único de su genio, it's the only one of its kind. It's something that, it, it, it's coming out of the, this God thing. It's still a part of it, a complete part of it. It's still divine. It's still a part of however this works. Okay. So then the question goes then, if Jesus has always existed, <clears throat> so if we did John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was, was God, and the Word was God, we know that Genesis is talking about the creation, we know that this is talking about some beginning that we don't know what that beginning is, right? We don't. But then we already, we, we talked about this is something that we just discussed. Jesus has always existed in the very same nature as God. Uh, he was in the very same essence of God and contained all the characteristics of God since the beginning, whatever that beginning is. But then we come to Genesis 1, the creation. And if we read Genesis, I, I think it's John 1, 3, and everything that was created was created through him. And nothing would have been created if not by him. Meaning that everything that exists in Genesis, everything that exists in the beginning, exists because of Jesus. So everything that you are and everything that we are from the creation of the earth in Genesis till now is because of Jesus. So everything is centered around Jesus since the beginning. But then the question comes in and says, okay, so where was Jesus in the Old Testament? Because we only hear about God, right? All you hear is the God, the God of Israel, and you hear... The Father and the Angel of the Lord. Okay. So let's look at it. Let's look at it. Where was Jesus in the beginning? Where was Jesus in the Old Testament if he's always existed? Right? Let's let's take a look at that. Okay? So let's look at a couple of verses. Um everyone's gonna help me out. Um first Kings thirteen eighteen, uh Jesse Numbers twenty sixteen. Um, Kimmy, you're going to read 2 Chronicles 32.21, and Elmer, you're going to read Luke 2.9. Luke 2.9. Actually, no, 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 no,
Elmer, read Genesis 16, 11 to 14. Robert, read Genesis 22, 11 and 15. Uh, 16, 11 through 14? Yeah. Um, Juan Carlos, Exodus 3, 2 to 4. Um, Dave, Exodus 13, 21. Was it? Exodus 13, 21. 13. Okay. Start us off. <clears throat> and he said to him, I also am a prophet as you are, and an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back, bring him back with you into your house that he may eat bread and drink water. Okay, so we have you just said an angel, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, next one. Uh, I believe it's in Numbers 2016. And when he cries, when he cried to the Lord, he heard our voice and sent an angel and brought us out of Egypt. And here we are in Kadesh, a city on the edge of your territory. Okay. You sent an angel? An angel. Okay, next one. So it says, So the Lord sent an angel and destroyed the mighty army, leaders and officials in the camp. Of send the what? An angel. An angel? Okay. Next one. Genesis 16, 11 to 14. Um, and the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a And what? An angel. Read it right. An angel. And the angel of the Lord. And the angel. Yes. Correct? Ah. Hey. Here's a distinction. The angel. Now, in the ones we read, there's an angel. And the one you read, the angel. Okay? There's a difference. There's a difference between a worker. And the worker. Yeah? Okay. Well, he's he's a preacher. He's the preacher. This is an angel. This is the angel. Very big difference. We're going to see that. Okay? Next one. Uh, but the angel of the Lord called him from heaven, said Abraham... Here I am. Which one are you reading, Ralph? 22, 11 to 15. Another the angel, right? And the angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven. Oof. Difference. The angel. Next one. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. What was that one? The, 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 or the angel, right? What's the next one? Who had Exodus 13, 21? Oh, In the back? 13, 21? Yep. And the, the Lord led the way. During the day, he used a tall cloud to lead the people. And during the night, he used a tall column of fire that led the a fire to lead the way. This fire gave them light so that they could also travel at night. Now read 1419. 1419? Yeah. Exodus. Then, then the angel of God moved, moved to the back of the people. The angel was usually in front of the people leading them. So the tall cloud moved from... Huh. From in the front of the people and went to the back. Watch this. Read 1319. Read thir you read 1319. And you're gonna read 1419 again. I mean 1321 Rob. Okay. <laughs> and the Lord went before them by the day in a pillar of clouds. Right. The Who went? Away. The Lord. The Lord went where? Before them in what form, Rob? 
by day and a pillar of cloud. Okay, at night. Pillar of fire. Okay, now read fourteen nineteen. Then the angel of God moved to the back of the people. The angel was usually in the front of the people, leading them. Hold on. Well, Rob just read. What did Rob just read? The Lord. The Lord what? Went before, Went before them. What did you just read? Then, then the angel of God moved to the back of the people. And then what? Where was he usually, it says? Keep reading. And then the angel was usually in front of the people leading them. Okay. So, so where was the angel usually? In the front. In the front. But Rod just read that who was in the front? The Lord. That God went before them. Yes? Yes. So what the heck is going on? Is the Bible contradicting itself? <laughs> no. What's going on here? Now, here, here's what's even crazier, right? Um, who read the one about the um, Exodus 3? Go to Exodus 3 with me. Oh, that was me. I was going to keep reading because I was yeah. Like, yeah, I was like... And I think we're going to get into the... Yeah, we are going to get But go ahead. Go to go Exodus 3. I like that next verse. So the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in the midst of a bush. Hold on. Wait till we're all there. Okay. Oh, Lord, Exodus 3, verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire. Okay, so who appeared to him? The Lord. The angel, the angel of the Lord. Okay, go ahead. He looked and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see... Hold on, hold on, hold on. What, did you, what just happened? Who was Who spoke first? The angel. The angel of the Lord. And then verse, verse 4 says what? Lord. The Lord. What the heck? Well, let's keep reading. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, JC. <Jason. laughs> <laughs> when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush. That's the part I want to get to. Okay. Because God called out of the bush, but who was in the bush? It was the angel of the Lord. So God is in the bush, and the angel of the Lord came from the bush. So what's happening? Do, do you see what's happening? Like, do, do you kind of see it? Uh, is it still confusing? I, I, it has to be, because it's, it's freaking confusing. I, I know. Well, I already spoke to you about this. So, so in one sense, in, 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 in Exodus, uh, uh, what is it, 13? 1321 and 1419, uh, the God will go before you, and then 14 says the angel of the Lord is before them. So you're kind of wondering, okay, who is this angel of the Lord? Obviously, the an angel and the angel are two completely different things. They have to be. They are. Okay, because it's not just a regular angel. This is the angel that's going before them. When he sends an angel, it's different. So watch this. Ah, we don't have time. Yeah. Let's let's keep it there. Okay, we're we're gonna finish it off next week. Okay, but understand that when the Bible and you'll see this, you'll recognize this now on as you see people read it. They will just go over this, especially in the Old Testament, like it doesn't exist. When there's a clear distinction between an angel and the angel of the Lord. In the verse that that that, that, Je, that Juan Carlos just read, there is a distinction. There is a sort of authority that exists with this the angel of the Lord. It's like he goes before Israel. He 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 says things. He's coming out of the bush and he's talking to Moses with some sort of authority. But there's an interchange of when God speaks and when the angel speaks. It's almost like they're trading places at one time. This is when John one one becomes a little even more relevant. Okay, this is when it starts to make sense. Okay, we'll leave it there for now. We'll finish it off next week. Praise God, Rob.